Are you striving for financial growth but feel limited by your current income? Tired of long commutes that steal precious family time? Concerned about rising bills? You're in the right place. The highest paid dot online's Black Friday sale offers a 25% discount on our VIP program with code November 25. This program includes over 45 content classes, bi-monthly live broadcasts, four hours of personal consultation, three hours of mindset counseling, and an exclusive Discord community. Though valued at $25,000 annually, it's yours for a fraction. You'll get it for much less. Plus, receive our bonus PDF. Don't make the biggest investing mistake of your lifetime. We've partnered with Affirm and Afterpay for flexible payment options. Visit highestpaid.online and elevate your financial journey with our VIP program. The economic climate is shifting. Ensure you're prepared. Act now. Beginning to um, Diddy now. So Diddy, real name Sean Cone, is sued by ex-girlfriend R&B singer Cassie for rape and I don't want to say that word and repeated physical abuse over a decade. Music mogul venerably denies allegations. The rapper who goes by P. Diddy allegedly controlled and abused Cassie for over a decade, as well as forcing her to have sex with multiple male prostitutes. Diddy has venomously denied all of the offensive, outrageous allegations. The music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Um, blah, 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 blah. Wait, let me go down. Oh, they met in 2005. They split up in 2018. The lawsuit claims that before the end of their relationship, Combs forced his way into our home and took advantage of her. Um, he's 54. She's what, 37 or something. Um, he denies it. So she says in a legal document that was filed in Manhattan federal court after years in silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and to speak up uh, on bullshit. For the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. Um, among the serious allegations is that Combs sex trafficked Casey, who's 37, to male prostitutes to fulfill his voyeurism fantasies in hotels and at his home. The lawsuit claims she was directed to have sex with multiple men, sometimes in masks and costumes, while the music exec watched, masturbated, and filmed it. In the court documents, um, Casey um, continues to say that the ordeal's horrific encounter says she had to take drugs to disassociate during the trafficking sessions. During one of the sessions in 2016, which are called freak offs in a lawsuit, a drunk Combs punched her in the face and given her a black eye as he fell asleep and she tried to leave the hotel. He woke up, ran after her and threw a glass vase. The lawsuit claims that while the hotel security cameras captured the incident, he paid them $50,000 to get rid of the footage. The lawsuit also claims that he asked Ventura to carry his gun in her purse. He allegedly once dangled one of Cassie's friends off a 17th hotel balcony. She alleged she Combs allegedly palled her with ecstasy and ketamine and often beat her up. Um, she never told authorities because would merely give Mr. Combs another excuse to hurt her. Lawsuits notes one event in 2009 where Combs saw her speaking to another agent. So he pushed her into the car and kicked her repeatedly in her face until she was bleeding. Documents also subscribe when Combs got angry that Casey was dating Kid Cuddy in 2012. Diddy told Cassie that he would blow up Cuddy's car. Around that time, Kid Cuddy's car did explode in his driveway, but she claimed she don't know if it was actually Diddy that did that. But um, if she did not obey, and she also says that Combs would threaten to suppress her music if she did not obey his violent orders. He also paid for her car and apartment and had access to her personal medical records. She is seeking unspecified damages. The lawsuit is brought under Adult Survivors Act. Who's which the lawyer? which is one second, which is a New York law allowing people to file claims even after the statute of limitations has run out. Uh, with the expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act fast approaching, it became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma. Isn't she married right now? She's married with two kids. And, and she also says, and that I will be recovering from 
for the rest of my life. Then why did she stay there for 15 years? Well, 10 years. Ex well, 10 years. She's uh, uh, Doesn't she sing or something like that? Yeah, she was a singer. And then when they so got. She to has where with financial wherewithal. Why didn't she just leave? I don't know. She said she tried to, and he threw the vase, and she was too scared to leave. Now. Well, she left anyway. She summed up a nerve to leave. Well, now. See, this stuff becomes, you know, like, it sounds like, what has her husband got to say about this? Oh, he's supporting her, of course. Oh, yeah. He wants the money. How's her professional career coming along? She doesn't have one anymore. She only got oh. out. They need the money. Financial shakedown through his attorney says Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations for the past six months. Mr. Combs had been subjected to Ms. Ventura's persistence demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, which was unequivocally rejected as blatant and blackmail. In other words, I would suspect that her lawyer would be Gloria Aldred or her daughter. No, that's not her lawyer, because it, it, what Gloria Aldred would make sure her name and face would have been on the ads. In the, in yeah, the well, here's the other thing. It's a shakedown. By the way, the point is... Like I said, it's a shakedown. So is there any counterclaim anticipated about extortion here? That's what his, the character. His lawyer is saying that it is a financial shakedown, that what she's saying is not true. Okay, so it's extortion and it's also he defamation says, character on his part. That'd be nice, cute, interesting, except I don't give a damn. One way or another, it just sounds like too much. Uh, see, I don't buy stuff like this. And you have women who actually have been done wrong. So every time you get one of these coming up like this, it gets crazy. Plus, it's another example of because of a political agenda, you get all kinds of craziness interjected in law. Where you start making exceptions like extensions of the statute of limitations and all of this other garbage where if somebody assaults you, hits you with a baseball bat, you got one year or two years to do it. Somebody pinches you on the butt and you get offended, then you've got 30 years to complain about it. I mean, it doesn't make good sense. You need consistency in the law. Now, if a woman is actually done wrong, that's not good give her an action but for everyone that's done wrong they get cut off on this plus this is an old time effort to uh reestablish the concept of palimony now you had um lee marvin an action hero type from back when his girlfriend sued him and the lower court awarded 10 million dollars against him uh, and everybody was happy and all across the country, they were talking about palimony, palimony, but the California Supreme Court reduced the millions of dollars down to, I think it was $10,000 and said, be gone, you aren't entitled to the rest of it. So this isn't the kind of thing that law is supposed to be about. This is just opportunism. Well, the past six months, Mr. Combs have been subjected to Miss Ventura's persistence demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a demanding book about That's their relationship, short. which was That's unequivocally black. rejected as blatant blackmail. Well, it's New York. Look what they're doing with Trump. He had to supposedly pay Stormy Daniels a good sum of money. We don't know how much uh, exactly, but there are allegations and uh, that was to keep her quiet. Any place else in the country, if you have to pay somebody to keep them from embarrassing you, that's called blackmail. So, so maybe they don't understand blackmail in the state of New York, or, or let me put it this way, in the boroughs of New York, New York, 
But anyway, this is. Well, maybe no, no, no. So maybe that's Sean Combs' defense because she's filing under the Adult Survivors Act. I know it's a bullshit act. Well, it's a state it's law. So I don't think it's a bullshit act when you got people paying and going to prison under it. Yeah, I know. It's like you call to... me a BS, but it's people that's getting yeah, found. Yeah, look, look, look. In other words, to these women. In, in other words, if anybody else was involved in that, and let's say somebody took a baseball bat or a brick and broke somebody's jaw in four or five places and knocked out six teeth. They'd have, depending upon what the statute of limitations is in New York, it's either one year or two years. But something like this, they get unlimited extension. Like, what's more serious? Somebody getting their face smashed in with a heavy object or somebody with this kind of situation? In is other that- words, why give an extension for something like this, which is way beyond what happened? wrongful death you get one year or two years depending upon the state uh a tortious misconduct where you set somebody afire and tried to torture them you get one year or two years depending upon the state aside from the criminal aspect uh so wrongful death one year or two years well i already mentioned that one so what is this where we have this select group of people? It's like hate crimes. Everything that a hate crime is supposed to resolve is already resolvable by the ordinary law. So you set up a special category of criminality if it offends a certain select group of people. And that always backfires within a decade anyway. So, I mean, it's just people who or lusting for. It says the timing, the timing of the Adult Survivors Act one year window to file civil cases opens November 23rd, 2022 and closes November 23rd, 2023. The Adult Survivors Act is a New York state law that creates a one-time, one-year look-back window for adult sexual assault survivors who are outside the statute of limitation. That's garbage. That means that any adult survivor, no matter when they were assaulted, and even if they are outside the statute of limitations, can file a civil case against the abuser or the institution. I get that. that Do you them. understand ramifications? 23, 2023. Do you understand ramifications? Somebody 67 years old can go back and sue somebody and say, when we were 16 in high school, he squeezed my boobs in the back seat of the car. One year, hey, that was what the devil that was 52 years ago. So, but what if they did try to report it and then it was ignored because the laws and how women would treat it were told that that, that's not the point, that is not what we're talking about. So, are you saying there's no report here? In other words, it's like you know, in this situation, it's not a report, but I'm just saying, in other words, you whenever it happened. Hell, somebody can be 89 years old and somebody is 91. And then, well, when we were in school, you know, or whatever. Yeah, okay, maybe there would have been no attention paid for it. But then it's just like this one. Statute of limitations long ran, so you revive it. See, the reason you have statute of limitations is humanity being what it is, in other words, if you haven't jumped on it by then, everybody move on with your life. In other words, it's something you don't have to worry about. Now they want to kick this in and defeat the whole purpose for why you have a statute of limitations. It's crazy. I am empathetic me- to a woman that got done wrong, but I mean, if you haven't done anything about it in 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 30, 40, 50 years, get on with your life. And plus, I'm looking at this. What kind of man's going to have his wife go out and do something like this? What kind of pussy is that? This is just an abomination under the law. The purpose for statute of limitations is based on the severity of the offense. At some point, you have to move on and everybody gets on with their life because of this pandering to special interest that is going on these days and to this rank feminism that actually defeats its purposes 
we have such things. In other words, the statute of limitations may have long run, but we're going to give a special grace period where whenever it ran, we start all over again. You got one year from the following date until the next date that is given to bring this up, whether it's four years old, five, 50, 70 years old, it doesn't make any difference. So let's throw the baby out with the bathwater. We got a whole lot of people out here who have been living productive lives and everybody's moved on. We've got witnesses that are no longer available, dead, in jail, forgetful, no longer remember the stuff, unlocatable, and you're going to open this worm uh, can up again, and you got a real live mess. It's just not practical. Now, we need to deal with law being consistent and the law is blind. It does not see what it's dealing with. But here you make an exception and you want the law to take the blindfold down and stare at it and say, oh, that's somewhat different. So we're going to change the rule here. So no, that's not the way so, law works. So, so are you saying that you know, if something took place outside of the limitations, because they do have limitations, that if the city or prosecutors or the justice system gives you an opportunity to come forward, because maybe your case was dismissed or never heard or whatever. It's not a matter of dismissal. That's not what we have here. I'm talking about a time when women did report stuff. That's and not take what we have. Here. That that is one where the matter was reported. If that is the case, then what happens is if she reported it, why didn't she file a civil action? See, there are two things, the criminal action and the civil action. The criminal action is in the interest of the people to maintain public peace, dignity, and order. The civil action is so that the violated person doesn't take matters into their own hands, take a gun and go kill whoever it is that did or I am wrong or whatever. So when you start saying, okay, we want to bring this back up, it's like, for example, arson has a statute of limitations. Manslaughter has a statute of limitations. Second degree murder has a statute of limitations. Uh, first degree murder in some states does not. And in some states is 99 years. So, I mean, what the devil's going on right here? You, you got an exception to these statute of limitations. And the specific purpose of statute of limitations is it's in the interest of society for people to move on after a certain point. So you've been leading a production life. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You have been having a gnaw at your soul. Well, hurry up and do something about it or move on and stop worrying about it. Now, a lot of people got done wrong. What are we going to do? People get done wrong all the time. I know people that lost one or both legs, one or both arms or all four appendages. So they had nobody to go sue. They were in 19 years old, 23 years old, and came back, no arms, no legs, no eyes, no face. Who do they sue? Let me ask you this question. What if the victim was a minor child? Well, the minor child is interesting. The statute of limitations for the minor child, if it otherwise runs, gets a year or two added after the child gets to majority, 18 years old. Okay, so if, if, the, the case. if the situation if this situation happened to a minor child and let's say the parents or whoever never fouled or maybe it was Dennis or whatever, the law states that when you become of age 18, you have two years to... Well, one year or two years, depending on okay, whatever... So they do give you a time frame when you come of age to... Yeah. Bring okay. In other words, let's say that you are 14 when this happens, and ordinarily it's personal injury, so you have one year or two years, depending upon your state. 
Uh, ordinarily, that time limit would run at 16, but because the child is a minor and cannot bring the action without an adult coming in as next best friend or guardian, what winds up happening is that when the child reaches 18, whatever the statute of limitations is, starts running from that point. If, for example, let's say there's a 10 year statute of limitations and the child's 14, when it happens, the statute of limitations would run when they're 24. So during that time period, there's an ample opportunity for the child, now an adult, to bring an action and pursue the matter. So the things are, it, it's like, in our system, there are perfect crimes, for example. In other words, if you did not do something against the public peace, dignity, and order sufficiently egregious to bring people's attention to it, you didn't do it. For example, it's Super Bowl coming up this year, and people will probably have pools or betting pools, so to speak, on who's going to be ahead in what quarter. Well, everybody gets in them, but in most states, even in Nevada, those things are illegal outside of a casino, but people do them because we've got this thing about search and seizure. You just can't come in and break off in somebody's place. There are a lot of cars parked out here at Super Bowl. Somebody's probably gambling illegally. See, you can get away with it. It's same thing elsewise. You know, this has been going on. You know, we can't have this thing where everybody's looking over their shoulders for the rest of their lives. It creates stress, all kinds of other stuff. Uh, so people joke about it. Statute of limitations has run, hasn't run. I can't talk about it. Okay. Statute of limitations ran. Let me, so this, let me bring this into the fold. Yeah. Let me bring this into the fold. The, um, so when we see right now, um, Bill Cosby, um, LA Reed, um, recently he had charges, um, filed against him in New York. I guess she had to get her, her charge in before the expiration date. But when we now is now is Sean Combs, do you think, you know, just like Bill Cosby, sometimes when you're in the music into in industry, you upset certain people and they line you up to take some type of fall or to make your life, you know, uncomfortable. And recently what happened over, I think it was some months ago over the summer, um, Sean Combs parted ways with Diego Spirits. It's a liquor company or whatever that was basically financing and marketing his um, liquor brand, Ciroc and Delion, because he accused them of racism and they said, that's not true. We invested a hundred million dollars and basically made you almost a billionaire. And you only put in $1,000, but he accused them of um, being racist and not marketing his products like they should or limiting the marketing. And that's when they said, we put a hundred million dollars into marketing your liquor brand. So we're not racist. Um, so do you think those higher ups who are connected probably with people in Hollywood or what have you lined them up? I'm not worried about them. What I am worried about is a 19 year old boy saying to himself, I'm not going to go out with this girl instead of petting and kissing and hugging in the back seat of the car or whatever. He says to himself, hell, I haven't done anything, but what if she gets mad at me? I'm 19 years old now. Hell, I could be 40 some years old and she come back at me. I'm not going to ruin my whole life. And see, that's one reason we don't have boys and girls 101 A and B being taught anymore. And that's why we've got the gay thing going on like it is. Yes, if it's okay to get your sexual satisfaction same sex, why risk this kind of thing that they're setting up when everybody says it's all right to go the other way? Think about it. Boys and girls need to be with each other when they start that's getting. Not, that's not. That's not what I'm. I'm, I'm I want no, to. No, but I mean, but that's the impact. I, I, I think you're saying, no, 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 but I, I get no. I get what you're saying. I need to stick on Sean Combs because I understand what you're saying. 
listen well, otherwise, to otherwise what the hell are we worried about because they're using these laws and they're putting celebrity faces on it and so what i'm saying is what you're saying is the laws are not being used properly for regular people because when they do put these celebrity faces on it that is because these celebrities don't probably piss somebody off who are in higher up. So they are using, manipulating, and taking advantage of the law because they have a personal vendetta against this no Okay, story. take a 19-year-old kid who has got ambitions of being a rap artist or who is a halfway decent musician. Same thing. He sits there and says, I'm just having a good time. We're just engaged in kissing and a few bras come off and all of the rest of it. The eight or nine times we went out on a date. So I got to worry about this for how long coming back? And I might make a big thing as a new star. So when I get 29 years old, this, this person's going to come back at me. Right. See, somewhere in there, uh-uh, you got to stop that. And see, the thing gets into this. Women are supposed to be equal, right? Under the law. So why do you create a law that gives them a situation to come back when the statute of limitations has run? Well, the law is not just for women. It's for anybody. But men don't come forward. Well, that means... Maybe the men should start coming forward. About what? About being harassed. Well, yes, but you see, they didn't make it for harassment. I'm using the word harassment. They well, made I mean, it for, why they not? Made it, they made it for they made it for the R word and they're in the sexual harassment. I got it, but let's put it about situations about harassment. Most guys can tell you about harassing situations where they've had some crazy psycho woman stalk them or go something and do something crazy about it or running them to them in a nightclub where they haven't dated in three years and pour a drink over their head when they see them with another woman. See, all these things happen, but it's like, move on. I mean, I, I'm against somebody abusing women. Do not abuse women. But don't ruin your law because you've got some people in your state legislative body that claim they're equal, but then turn around and say they want special privileges because of their gender. And then who do you give it to? Do you give it to some fake gender or do you give it to somebody who's born that way? Don't judge him, Joe Brown.